October 6th and it's a step 13 Libra day. Today is a day where you can expect the unexpected. Energy is calling for innovation of fairness, justice, balance and equality today. There is two parties in a relationship that may cry out if something is, is unjust. <clears throat> also today with the moon in cancer, feelings you may run in uh, may dive deep today. Today is about not reacting the way you normally react. It can be a powerful day. And if you guys haven't done it yet, um, put down in the, in the um, I'm sorry, go over to our events page and register for our Joshua Tree event on the 21st of October, 21st of this month. Put down where you're from and let's get into it today. Today's going to be a powerful day. I can already feel it. The last couple of days has just been jam packed. And uh, I don't know about you, but I have like I had three naps yesterday, um, <clears throat> feeling completely drained and people calling with headaches. Headaches behind the eyes, pressure in the head, <clears throat> people like uh, detoxing, getting sick. Now Good it's morning. Today. Sunny Michigan, Libra, welcome, Libra, California. Yes, I got my Joshua Tree ticket. Awesome. Hello from Austin. Hello. So come in from Austin. Austin's a quick flight to Joshua Tree. Brooklyn. Good morning from Los Angeles. Hi from the Cayman Islands. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Uh, when are you coming to Vancouver? What do you mean? We just, we were there. We were in Vancouver for the last four months, three months. <clears throat> um, what is happening? Why is that happening? It's the astrology, Michigan. Come in, four towns in. We're going to talk about this today. Powerful morning, yes. Powerful rising. Morning is what I do when I go to a funeral. Keep reminding me that when I say good morning, everybody. I'm getting married October 21st. Oh, that's awesome. Come do a class, get married, same time. <laughs> Hi from England, Toronto, Wyoming. Yeah, 21st is a powerful day to get married. It's a uh, grandmaster day and bringing balance back into your lives. So you're getting married on a balanced step. <clears throat> We've got Saskatchewan, Jersey, Illinois, Port Moody. <clears throat> We've got uh, Loveland, Colorado. Welcome, welcome. Give me a bunch of likes down there, guys. Right down there. Just hit that like button. Just keep pressing it. Send it out to a friend or two. Tell the algorithm that you're serious, that you're here for business. <clears throat> Good morning, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Vienna, <clears throat> Palm Desert. Oh, that's where we're going. I guess you're coming out. Want to talk? Hi from Jordan. Yeah, Jordan's a place I want to go to, by the way. 90-year-old doing maneuvers. My grand, uh, Grammy, Crampy. That's awesome. Yes, 90-year-old maneuvers, 100-year-old maneuvers. Um, <clears throat> we're looking for 150-year-old maneuvers. You keep doing fashion maneuvers, you'll measly make it to 150. People go, I don't want to live that old. That's because you look around and look at how people live. I wouldn't want to live like that either. But... Age has nothing to do with dysfunction in the body. Time has nothing to do with dysfunction in the body. Taking care of it over time does. And we can reverse anything in the human body. Creative Candy, Michigan. <clears throat> hey, Ryan. Looking forward to it. We're bringing up Ryan. <clears throat> okay, looking for Ryan to come on up. Hey, Ryan, you can uh, hit it up in the comments there. I'll see you. She's under seven 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 eight zero eight one zero. Oh, seven 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 eight zero eight one zero. Just yep. put a comment in the. There it is. View request. Questions. <laughs> <clears throat> welcome, welcome. Oh, you declined. You got to do it again, Ryan. Seven seven eight zero eight one zero. Hey Ryan. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. I got questions though. Well, first of all, tell everybody your name, what you do, and then uh, your birthday. Uh, Ryan. Um, I am technically a holistic practitioner, but um, I've kind of gone more into the trauma and fascia and emotional release um and we tend not to have to use as many protocols right 
So, right. um, birthday. yeah, my birthday, uh, uh, July 12th, 78. You know, we have a new girl on our team here, uh, Mary from Australia. And you guys, you guys even look alike in the face. You guys, you guys look like twins. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you, do you think so, Lisa? Take a look at her. Take a look at her eyes. Yeah, yeah, you guys actually, you actually look alike. That's oh, wow. yeah, oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They say we all yeah. have doubles, right? Yeah, I think yeah, she's pretty much a, a double of you. And she's also a ex CrossFitter, uh, recovering CrossFitter. Yeah. yeah, that's about what I am not recovering from CrossFit, but all the other stuff. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. absolutely. How long have you well, how did you become a holistic practitioner? Um, I don't know, it was a journey. I, I still design shoes on the side. But um, my I had you can run away. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, they um, I I had Hashimoto, full blown Hashimoto's, and um, most of my life I had thyroid and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then about thirty six, I crashed. Um, I was on like five different meds and had full blown Hashimoto's, and um, couldn't get out of bed and had two little ones. Um, I kind of started my journey though. My kiddo was born with an inguinal hernia. And so we had some microbiome things and I know now hindsight, yeah. I know what caused it. I know why the whole, sh the whole deal. But so it is what it is. It was part of my journey. And so I started by helping him trying to figure out how to heal him. Um, right. and then it led into me. Um, and we just kind of in 2015, um, my husband and I just crashed in a lot of ways and I started to go down the road of healing. Um, but went into that functional side with naturopaths and my eyes were turning yellow. You know, my liver was crashing. I was getting kidney stones cause they were just continuously dumping things in me. Um, and I didn't have space. Right. So, um, I start and it was a lot of money. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so I started just studying on my own and I started um, working through trauma and creating boundaries with people and healing through family of origin. And um, that's kind of how it all started. And so, so yeah, you, you, you a lot of people are in that stage right now where they're seeking help. They're going into natural medicine, naturopaths, uh, functional medicine, doctors, uh, chiropractors and stuff like that. And you, You've been in, in that world and you've worked in that but world, yeah. uh, working yeah. with functional yeah. medicine doctors, yeah. chiropractors, naturopaths, and, and still you were having your own personal issues. Yeah, I think, the, I think um, in so many ways when I switch from conventional to um, functional, and I'm in the holistic realm and, and I do use um, frequency tinctures if needed, but the reality is I realized I was a supplement salesman and um, using so many modalities and the body was getting so much and I was so overwhelmed and overthinking everything that it just continued to make everything worse. And, um, 2020, I, I watch your live like every day now, 2020. Um, I had that stroke like deal that you're, you were talking to those ladies about the other day. Yeah. Um, what happened is a lot of these functional doctors will go in and clean out these candidas and these bacteria, and they, they release metals, a ton of them. Yes. And um, so I don't think now, you know, they, they did CT scans. There was nothing, you know, oh, you have MS. I'm like, I don't have MS. Um, but point being, um, that's why I pulled out of that whole functional setting and working with these big guys because we were just plugging them with so many supplements and so many modalities, and we were only scratching the surface. Um, yeah. Bacteria only grows to try to protect us from other toxins and metals, period. Right. Absolutely. Um, so we kept killing out the protection and then we did an open pathways and we didn't give them a way to release the emotions and toxins in the tissues. And so it, this is what was happening to me too. So, um, what do you feel is like the relationship between the bacteria, the heavy metals, and then the way that you, your trauma is stored or perceived? So, um, I learned this along the way as I studied that obviously we hold, you know, the body doesn't know the difference between emotions and, and physical uh, pain. Yeah. It just reacts. Um, right. So when we have this ailment, it's because the emotional has been stored so long and it's, it's then becomes, you know, inflammation of some sort, um, pain of some sort. 
Um, so the reality is I started go, I did start doing, you know, obviously just trauma work, you know, therapy type things, sure. um, talk, talk, help, um, emotional release. I went to a Rolfer cause I knew, okay, I'm going to work on this family of origin. It's in my tissues. It's in this inflammation in my neck. It's in this inflammation in my body. We're going to get this out. Um, she had no clue what she was doing. So I ended up a shit show afterwards, but it's okay. Um, as you and I have talked, the reality is we become kind of these really fancy lab rats to help others, right? So right. Yeah. what is the only way to help someone else or, or plant a seed, I should say? Um, help them help themselves, I like to say. Be in it yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's to experience. Because yeah. with my experience, when, you know, we think we're conveying knowledge, but what we're doing is conveying a frequency. Right. And this right. is why when somebody talks about a disease or disorder, but doesn't have any, any history with it, they don't have the frequency. And it, they do over time, like, like, like I've dealt with women's issues a lot. I'm not a woman, but I have, I have delved into like two hours of conversation to 20 hours of conversation with thousands and thousands of women to try to understand how the issues affect them both hormonally, physically, emotionally, perceptually. And so that after a long period of time of experience, I can garner their experience and then talk about it and convey that feeling to, to people. And that's why it works. But other than that, we have a, a society of medicine and care that's trying to program this. And that's not what people buy into. Mm -hmm. They're buying into a frequency. Well, in the reality, reality is I started out in autoimmunities. I worked with big guys in autoimmunities and they wanted to just put them on a plethora of stuff. And I'm like, but their guts are not an even a safe environment. They're not even absorbing anything at all. Right. And, and if they're in a domestic marriage of some sort, I'm not going to tell them to work through affirmations and breathe through and calm. You know, the autonomic system is a badass. Yeah. And that's how I started walking back. Um, and diving deeper into the root of things and all this stuff that we've programmed into ourselves, all those women, I was listening to the lady the other day that was like, I have this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, I'm glad that I got out of that hot mess before I got the laundry list because they go onto the internet, they diagnose themselves and through their mind, they create this sickness. You know, you know, it's funny. Um, they, uh, I'm not going to mention the name um, because I, it, my intention is not to embarrass anybody, but my, but to call something out, when I was at the clinic, we had the Lime Girl yeah. on oh. Instagram come through, and and I was started to help her and stuff like that, and um, then finally I said, because Lyme is such a tricky one, where did you get your diagnosis? And she goes, well, I didn't get a diagnosis. Yeah. And I'm like, you're leading hundreds of thousands of women yeah. through this process. You you don't even really know if you have it or not. You're just reporting symptoms, which those symptoms cross a variety of other things, including parasitic activity like Epstein Barr and yeah. Bartonella and stuff like that. Oh, they love that one. If you got Lyme, yeah. you definitely got the Bartonella, and you definitely. But what people don't realize is that we have Epstein Barr in our body. We have E. coli in our body. Absolutely. We're supposed yeah. to. It's what keeps us. It's what keeps our bio terrain balanced. So there's a good, so, there's a good word. So bio terrain, because a lot of people listening to this don't even know what that means. In your, in your words, explain what that means. So as I dove even deeper into this, just in the last year working with another mentor, we're doing frequency tinctures and such. We're, my, we're yeah. time stamping, not, we're time stamping um, uh, ailments that coincide with trauma. Right. Because they all go with trauma. Lyme, I don't know, this whole tick thing. Whatever. No, no, I don't think it's no, any listen, of that. The, it's, tick thing, the tick thing is so, like, I bust that myth all the time. No, There's people that have never no, been near a tick. No. But, but the nervous system, you know, like, like you said, it's already in our DNA. Yep. So it's coming up for some yep. reason. That, that reason is a frequency. And if you go out and kill, it's the same as antibiotics or anything else. If you have massive E. coli, you've got a shit ton excuse my french of toxins and metals in your intestines yes you do yeah. um if you have a parasitic type thing going on um it's there it your body has taken it into its frequency to try to help it does um 
protect it from metals and toxins. There you go. That, um, that's, that's what it is. Parasites and viruses are protecting it correct. and helping us heal. And, and if they're there, it's, it's a warning sign because they have other activities. They affect our brain function, the way we perceive the world, et cetera. Yeah. But they have a function. And to, to eliminate that function without, un, without having a plan or an understanding or a way around it, it is taking out a major part of the wheel. It's like in these biodynamic gardens. It's like yep. taking out one element and then yep. the whole garden starts to fail. And that, that's why people in functional medicine, they know they're not stupid. So you can give, you know, a little charcoal, a little binder of some sort to help with the biofilms. Well, guess what? Most functional doctors don't do that because they know you'll come right back in six months with the candida again and the clostridia again and the, all of the above. So if you look deeper into, and this is where you came into my life, which was, you know, was a massive, massive humbling moment. Um, a year ago when I started studying with that doctor with the tinctures and we started really diving into things, I started, you just talked about this the other day. I started gaining weight. Yeah. I was like, what in the hell is going on? And so I went into some lymphatic drainage stuff and I went into, um, and then guess what day I flew home last year? What day? December 20th. Oh, my birthday. <laughs> but that, that's when we talked about this stuff starting, these karma things, this stuff. Yeah. I went back to St. Louis to this toxic, which is why I moved to Florida. Um, my body was in this state and I had this, my body started to do these things with like, I felt like I was having a heart attack. Yeah. It would just yeah. drop down to like everything. It was insane. So as I continue to study deeper into this, what I'm realizing is that, and after I met you in March, um, it all has to do with our environment. It all has to do with um, not affirmations of I'm blessed and I'm okay and all this somatic stuff. Um, it has to do with retraining our brain in a safe space. If we're not in a safe space, we won't heal, period. Yes. No matter how many modalities, no matter how tough you work on clean diet, tinctures, even fascia work. If you yeah, are, you have to are not in a safe safe. environment, and you don't have um, sound boundaries within your tribe and who you're connecting with, you will not heal. And that's what I finally came to terms with. And so when I reached out to you, I was like, holy shit, my legs are finally going down. <laughs> They're finally well, I guess put some context around that so people understand because you're doing everything right. You know all about bio -terrain, you know all about supplementation, you know all about healing in all these different ways and modalities and you were still having your own issues. So, so I think you said it best. We, so the, my mentor that I study with, we say it like this, we're an onion. Okay. So we do, do have to tap into some sort of bacteria. We've got tapeworms, pinworms, some things that are causing massive discomfort. Let's tap into that. But as we move back, we unpeel the onion or as you, or as you say with your herpes and stuff, we are unwinding all of this stuff that we have consumed over the years in our tissues. Right? Yeah. So as I was unwinding, I, I continued to um, swell up in my legs. I always had some issues, but not like this. Like, it is insane. Like, so tight. Like, it felt like my legs were going to, like, burst open. It was, ugh. And I'm rollerblading, you know, six to eight miles a day, breathing and fascia movements and the whole deal, and nothing's happening. Um, I, and then when I met with you in March, um, it was a very humbling moment because I just asked God, I was like, dude, what am I missing here? I'm supposed to be helping these people planting seeds with my clients and I can't even figure out what the hell's going on with me. Sure. So you popped up and I took, well, it was the 28 day, but it was the other thing. I don't know. We paid whatever you, yeah, it was, it was a little the, more the, extensive the, with Ryan. The guy, the guy did one with Ryan. Yeah. And I told you, oh, I don't need these supplements and I'm not doing this. And I was so pissed that basically I had, it, it's kind of like when you left the, the clinic. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I've been doing this for all these years. Why didn't I know this? Why didn't I do better? Um, people have told me to stop moving, you know, my neck, everything. Um, so I started moving and three days later I texted you because I had like massive E. coli out of nowhere. Like, I mean, obviously out of somewhere, but yeah. three days later I woke up in the middle of the night, throw, like I seriously thought I was having a heart attack and went to my thing, got muscle tested and stuff. And, um, we started from there and I did get on a few of your subs. Um, and I've continued 
to do the fascia maneuvers and continued to implement them. Um, and then I decided to go back to a Cairo office and help out for six months yeah. and the legs came back. Yeah. Um, and it's what you mentioned when you gained weight and releasing the emotion and taking in these toxic environments. Um, yeah. And so finally, Finally, I told the guy, I was like, I'm done. I don't, I don't want a room here. I don't want any of this. And I quit in June. And so that's why I texted you last week. I'm like, my legs are finally going down. Um, we did tackle some pretty uh, gnarly as we peeled through um, Rocky Mountain, uh, Giardia. Some people call it Giardia. Um, that was heavy in my lymphatic system. Yeah. Um, and has been, been there for a long time. Um, but... I removed myself from the environment because the environment, the environment is, is unfortunately is telling everybody what's wrong with them. And then they have all the emotions of letting go of all the anger and frustrations and sadness that they have when they get a diagnosis and, and then they start working on it. But as a practitioner, especially you, cause you're a cancer and I, are you a, I can't remember. Are you a 20 degree cancer? Do you remember? I don't remember. I was born at 708. I, I don't think know. you're 20 degree, which makes you a grandmaster cancer. I, I yeah, you did you. say I was yeah. that. Yes. So, so you, so you, you're born to feel and protect those feelings, and so you're feeling your audience or your or your environment, and you're 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 consuming that environment, and and that was going directly to your legs. Well, yeah, I told you, I was like, I, screw this fast. I can't fast right now. Like, I was so pissed off. And you're like, you can't fast when you're in that all day. Like, I would fast all day. And, but, you know, I, all of my clients, do you know how many clients I have that quit? They call me and they're like, just so you know, I quit my job. <laughs> like, like, literally, like, so many of my clients, I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, but if you're breaking out in hives, walking to your desk, might be where it's at. I don't know, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so, at this point, yeah, and it's been, it's always an ebb and flow, and it's always this unwinding, but the biggest thing I've learned from you, I mean, I honestly, you and Dr. Parker are my biggest mentors in all of these years of doing this. Um, it's stop being afraid of crap. It's not crashing. Right. Like, yeah. I finally had this pivotal moment where I was like, holy shit, my, my heart is not stopping. Yeah. It's just slow. Blowing, I mean, like 81 blood pressure. I mean, insane. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, why don't you stop for a moment, Ryan, and realize that it's slowing down to heal? Yeah. Think of yeah. that, like, that's what's happening, you know? It's slowing down to heal. My Chiari that I have, it's actually a blessing because as much as it scared me because the medulla is kind of squished, it's actually a really cool alarm system because if I am exposed to something, you um, right I it is something right away so versus all this stuff that's cycling. Chiari is basically a leaching of the brain back down onto the brain stem. Mm -hmm. and, and what, you know, over the years, you've seen my face change, mm -hmm. my head change, my neck change. And what I've done with people who have Chiari is clinically is I would pull all the fascia this way and then we would go back and measure and look. And then the brain would come back up because basically the fascia is just pulling it yeah. down yeah. and not pulling it forward. And well, so that, that was my deal. I had, I was not only like this, I have a C5 that's half gone, which I know it cartilages and everything, but you know, like this kind you're like, Oh, your C5's like screwed up. You could tell like from this. Yeah. Um, but that's what I do now. I do the clasps, you know, where I pull up and I move yeah. down so huge if I'm on a product or a, a project where I have to sit, because it's still kind of rough if I have to sit for a long period of time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's your body's unwinding the trauma. Like yeah. when you had a traumatic event, then, um, then you had all these emotions about it, which store in the body, then your body creates uh, a story, a narrative, and then dysfunction, you start winding down. Yep. And then you're just winding back out. And you know, there, there's times like, like, um, uh, like when my face blew up, Everybody is like, you got to go see a dentist. It's going to leach into your brain. This is, this, this is insane. I'm like, no, I, I trust that my body's doing every day what it's, what it's meant to do. And, and as long as I trust and I believe that it's doing the right thing and I'm moving forward and I'm taking appropriate steps yep. to move it forward, then my body's healing itself. Yep. 
and and that trust factor is what we've lost because we want to control everything and we don't and we're like when something's painful it's like i gotta fix it and that's that's what you were coming out of this yeah. is that that whole mentality and the fear that goes along with it and and you know like even when my face blew up i didn't have any fear there's a couple times i'm like okay when's it gonna go away you know it was only four days but there's a couple times when I when I felt there was one time when I was looking at it and thought it was getting worse, not better, and I and I had a moment of, oh my God, it's getting worse. Why isn't it getting better? And and I and what was crazy is that when I took a picture objectively, it was getting better, but my brain I could only see it getting worse because I had the narrative. Well, that, that's like with my with my body and stuff, you know, the, in the line of work I do it's tough to when you're feeling funky and mushy and whatever else. And, um, so it's, that's been a humbling moment for me too, you know, and, and I'm very, um, I'm very, um, transparent with my clients. You know, a lot of these people that go to these coaches, they act like, you know, well, if you're not rebounding and doing all your crap for two hours a day or whatever, then you're, you're not doing it correctly. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell them I'm like, listen, I'm dealing with some stuff right now, you know, and this yeah. is how it comes up and this is how we roll with it. And it's been given to me by the universe so that I can be a vessel to you guys. And, but I'm always vulnerable in that. And the, the, the face and the, um, you know, I, I can tell how my face changes if I'm sitting and I'm stagnant for a bit, you know, versus, sure. and then stretching open that fashion, all that. But I think the biggest thing we have to remember is we didn't get in this overnight. I mean, we screwed our bodies up for 36 Second. years. I mean, yeah. I mean, and then we beat, we beat our body up. I actually was in the shower the other night and, um, I, I started to cry. I was looking at my legs and I wasn't crying cause I was sad on my legs. I just, I thanked the body. Yeah. I was, I just started to get so emotional because I was like, and I'm getting emotional now. I was like, thank you so much for carrying me and trying to shove this stuff somewhere to make me still function. You know, like yeah. we're so hard on ourselves and yet look how badass the body is and how resilient it is. It's, it's a machine, it you know, if you give it what it needs, if you don't give it what it needs, it doesn't work. And then we yell at it because it doesn't work, you know? Yeah. So I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to have connected with you. I'm blessed to have connected with Ryan. Um, and this is like, this is it, you know, this fashion thing and not the fashion, like a deep lymphatic deal. I mean, they're great and all, but this is on another level, yeah. you know? intention behind it it's it's a the intention is is that you're not broke and fashion maneuvers was created with the intention imbued in the therapy or in the process in the philosophy and be, because because of that i believe that's why it's that's why there's tens of millions of people around the world now doing it because it works because it it's creation it's an entity by itself fashion maneuvers is an entity and that's why we made it free to the world and that's why we also put the intention behind it which is we're not broken like you said our bodies are badass yeah. they're doing <clears throat> despite all the crap we've done to it mm -hmm. it still gets up and functions every day it literally repairs itself like every three to five days the problem is if you continue to throw crap in it both emotionally it can't it's kind of like when i tell people fasting isn't like to get a little physique fasting is to give your body a break you know, to restore the organs. And if you're eating late at night, it can't repair. It's just sitting there digesting food all night. So I, I think that's the biggest thing I tell people overall is that we didn't get in this overnight. It's going to take some time. Be kind, be gentle with yourself and understand that these, instead of feeling like, you know, cause we grew up in this sick system that if you feel bad, you're sick. Yeah. And the reality is um, we're not. No. We're you know, when the body's reacting, let's see, you know, when your tooth is hurting, they're all connected to an organ. Yeah. If you're back, what, tackle the intestines, what's going on, you know. Um, anyways, I'm just, I had to just, I talk with you randomly, um, but I had to just um, give you a huge shout out because it's, I've been with a lot of people and um, you've just been a huge, huge, huge vessel in a very short period of time and I'm grateful. Well, it's. it's it's also giving you the ability to have your experience. Because I, <laughs> I remember in the 28 day reset, you were pissed. That's an understatement. <laughs> That's an understatement. I was, I was pissed. I, um, I think it was the ego, yeah. you know? 
And I was, I was pissed too, because I think it was bringing up old emotions of when I would reach out to these functional doctors, you know, that were supposed to be in our best interest and help us. And they didn't, and they were, you know, selling us stuff instead. Um, I, when I tapped into this and realized that here's even more, this is our next steps in this. I was so angry out of that ego that, oh my God, but I could have been doing this for people. Right. Or I, but the reality is had I not um, hit these kind of all time lows to, you know, come back up, I might not have crossed paths with you. So we do the best we can. At the end of it, actually, um, you going back on December 20th, which is Equinox, which is my birthday. Yeah, you can't make that stuff up, right? It's there, there is a connection between us. There's a connection between all of us that are that are in this and helping other people. And what we're doing is going through a similar experience where I, I tell people all the time, I have all this knowledge from the old world, which lets me communicate at a high level. Mm -hmm. But I'm going through this just steps ahead of you. And I had I had no idea. Like when I went back to Vancouver, um, I, I, I consciously just said, I'm going to stop doing fashion maneuvers except for some basics, like just the stress reset a little bit here and there so that I could feel what would happen, get my body contrast. Right. And, and within two weeks I lost 20 pounds, gave away 20 pounds and I became, and I have my 13 year old body weight, which I haven't literally had since I was 13, my body changed and it changed right in front of my eyes in front of everybody. And, and it was like, it was the, the, the shock to me, like what, I don't weigh myself, but what happened was all of a sudden my, my, my shorts were falling off and I'm like, what was that? Cause I didn't look physically here. I didn't look too much different. I could see I was a little bit leaner, but I, but I, then all of a sudden it looked like I was working out. It looked like I was putting muscle on. And no, the I last few months I texted you. I was like, dude, what are you like? You're like. 30 years younger like this is crazy just out of nowhere yeah and and i'm just a step ahead of everybody because all the only thing i'm doing and i stopped using um the only supplements i use are the are are, are supplements and i go on and off of them but the only th but i but i tell people all the time i i take diatomaceous earth and irish sea moss as part of my daily routine it's in my food it's not in my it's not a supplement it's part of because that no longer exists in the food that we eat doesn't matter how good or how, how organic it is. And, and outside of that, I just do fashion maneuvers and I manage my thoughts, my emotions in real time. And I can't, exp I, I still can't really explain what's happening to my body. I mean, I'm observing it. I have theories about why it might be happening, but I can't explain it. I like, I, with any level of certainty, I can just say it's happening. But you know what, I, it's because I always tell my clients this, we're not putting any supplements in. We're not doing this. We're going to create space. Yes. And as we create space, our body literally decompresses. Yes. That's what it is. Emotionally. It's, it's... Um, and, and really, honestly, it has to do with the emotional and the autonomic system. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. because you, you can eat clean, you can do whatever you want. You're not going to, I mean, I know this for a fact, you're not going to get where you want to get. That's, that's the key. I was having the conversation with your doppelganger last night. Yeah. <laughs> is that she's new coming in with all kinds of questions. And, you know, one of them was about weight. And we, you know, she took a, you know, like calories is, you know, in and out is it bullshit. And I said, yeah, it's a hundred percent. You could, there's a certain measurement that works to a certain degree, but all of the calorie diets to lose weight or gain weight, eventually yep. they, they, they work for a period of time because you give your body contrast. Your body goes, oh, I like the contrast and I'm doing something new. So your body starts changing its behavior. But eventually it always, always, always fails. And if it didn't fail, then everybody who counted calories would be healthy. And well, and the reality is that the, the, the mind status that they set themselves up with, I used to tell people, I'm like, stop going to yoga if you don't like yoga. Yeah. Like, every time you do that, you put your body in this fight or flight state, it cuts everything down, it's a cesspool in your gut. And even if you eat a little twig of lettuce, it's not gonna work, you're not gonna lose weight. So same thing with food. When you're sitting there counting calories, it's like when I was in the holistic nutrition world. They're nuts. Yeah. Like pairing food and macros and micros and, and coffee. In them. I, I mean, I, it's just insane. I'm so, glad, I'm so glad you said that because I have observed, I've, I've hired and worked with uh, 
well over 200, um, well, well, well over 200 nutritionists. And I find as a general rule, this isn't every one, but as a general rule, they're the most neurotic and have the most amount of problems. I was one of them. You're right. Yeah. Like literally you get so OCD on these things. It's, it's so unhealthy. It's yeah. so unhealthy. Um, and, and honestly, as long as you're eating clean, and, and it's the same thing with radiation and chemicals and chemtrails, you know, like obviously we do diatomaceous earth and stuff to give ourselves nutrients and minerals, you know, Celtic That's salt, it. those kind of things. But the reality is that if we are in a safe state and we are in a balanced state, we're glass. This guy explained this to you. It's so cool. Nothing can get through. Right. You can swim through radiation, EMF. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The minute yeah. you are in a stagnant, chronic stress unhealthy environment emotionally and physically you become granite you know you know it's funny because yesterday i was talking to um the guys yeah. about yeah. the emf thing and what he's doing is rebalancing turning uh, a bad frequency into a good frequency which is exactly that because it keeps your body in that state mm -hmm. but because we are more sensitive to light and frequency than we are to the chemicals even that we put in our body that's why that's why if we have bad light and bad frequencies, eventually it doesn't matter what we put in our body, it won't work. So we can put functionally not okay stuff in our body, but if our body has good light, good movement, good breath, good oxygen, good water, eventually the body will win. Yep. It'll find well, that's rebalancing the bio terrain. That's where like, <clears throat> I'm really getting into, let's do that. Let's tap into the, the main organs like you say. You know, when we do the twist, when we do these things, it opens up that liver, it opens up that gallbladder, and that's where we need to start. And then the parasitic stuff just rids itself, and then the other, the bacteria is balanced out. I'm not a fan of germ theory and all that crap. Yeah. I think that by, is bullshit. a fancy word. It's all bullshit. bullshit. It's all bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, they like feed this stuff on frequencies, <laughs> and guess what? If you're in a chronic state and you're overworked and you're in an unsafe environment, you're going to pick up everything under the sun. Yeah. But the reality is if we clean our space and we clean our tribes and we make healthy boundaries, who gives a shit if you're next to a 5G tower? Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, that there was a, there was a transition point because I was highly affected by, for a while as I was, my fascia was opening up. Um, was I talking to somebody live about it? Um, I can't remember, but it was a numbing in their hands. And I had this tingling in my hands, which I thought was cervical pain. And to the point where I was like level nine, level 10, my brain thought it was pain. And when I, when I ruled out all possibility of nerve issues, thought it's not a nerve pain. So what is it? Then I said, it has to be something new. Well, what could that be? Well, I'm doing all this new fascia work. It's a new, it's a new sensation. Once I, once I came to that conclusion, my pain dropped by 50% in over 28 days. It went away and it became not pain anymore. It became a cool thing, but I was like, I go buy a 5G tower. I could tell you because my hands would light up. Yeah. And, and but today, yeah. but like just like you said, today, frequency, chemicals, they don't really affect me anymore. Mm -hmm. Chemtrails, um, stuff like that. They they have they have virtually. I can feel them. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily like the feeling. You don't want to go but it well, sleep by it on a daily basis. But like, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't affect the body and, and in defense to everybody that's healing. Yes, it is good to not have screen time. Yes, it is good to not sleep with it on your head because the reality is we are in a stress state. Most of us, right. especially in once healing. You of, once you come out of that, yeah. state, your body can handle it yeah. again. That's the point is that, is that in our current environment, it's death, death by a thousand cuts. It's not the 5g. It's not the 5g and the chemtrails. It's not just the 5g, the chemtrails, the pesticides and herbicides it's not that it's also the social programming it's the mm -hmm. the guilt and the shame that goes along with with i have a problem like like our skin breaks out and we want to hide it from the world because we're because we are we're ashamed and we have embarrassment that is a hundred times more acidic than all of the five g's and all the other stuff that's going around yeah 100 percent. well yeah when i was cleaning out some of those parasitic things that were going on I had to go see my clients with, you know, we have hooks. We have old places where we used, you know, I had hormonal acne way back in the day. So where's the skin going to push out emergency exit? Then a yeah. spot, you know, old. So I had to, I was like, oh, dear God, this is going to be great. And then I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go and tell them, look, guys, I'm tackling some stuff right now, too. And this is where it's at. Like, yeah. 
So it, if we just ebb and flow and breathe, it's very hard, especially um, with all these fake things going on, lips and, you know, all this button, oh, boobs and all this. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, quick. Okay, so Ugh. you see a lot of this. What, what, why don't you tell us what you think about things like fillers and Botox and, and implants and stuff like that? Uh, I will tell you in a simple sentence. I deal with a lot lot of very very sick women uh, not i don't mean sick like you're sick like mentally obviously they're not well because they're getting all this done but i'm being all serious they're very very sick physically yeah from because the body sees this as a foreign object and it continues to try to get rid of it sure um and mm -hmm. the reality is yeah but these are part of our lives you know this is part of my life and as I heal and as I move and groove, um, they dissipate, they move, you know, but the reality is as long as we continue to pump ourselves full of toxins and Botox and duck lips, it looks horrible. These, these big things, like, what is this? But it's, it's full of toxins. So it, at some point you will crash and I'd much rather age, um, gracefully and in a clean state. You don't have to age. We can anti-age. Yeah, I don't, I, mean, I don't believe, I, mean, I believe I mean, my you, life's just started. Yeah. Like, I, I feel better and look better you at 45. Too. You were, than, you, 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 legitimately, when I met you, you were looking like you're a little bit older. And you've been getting younger <laughs> and younger and younger every day. Yeah, yeah you know, because and, I'm, I'm making space, Yeah, you know, and, and, and creating boundaries. Let me just tell you, I, when I do my own thing now outside of, I don't work for anybody anymore. Um, when we do a discovery call, they think it's for them. It's for me. Yeah. Because I'm an energy snob, and um, I I choose who I connect with, and yeah. um, I plant seeds. I don't you know throw them away, but I plant seeds, and sometimes I say I think we need to connect at a later date, and um, sometimes we connect okay, and we I hold them accountable. So, but either way, yeah. Yeah. yeah so there, there's a couple things like I'll tell you some of the big ones for for women that I see, and it's there's this it's so it's socially acceptable to do things for women that are horrible like like for example these this here oh it's formaldehyde it's horrible that's my that's my, my and even covering it with piggy paint that yes. is my henna that is my fascia that is fascia hardened fascia my hair dyeing it yeah hardened that's my i don't do that my, anymore either unfortunately but but yeah you know it's 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 like uh cynthia used to have have gray in her hair and she used to dye her roots, but she didn't have to now. It's all baby hair growing yeah, in. Yeah, mine's all growing back. I mean, I have a few still because I've been doing a pretty insane protocol. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not, I don't have as many. And yeah. I even did the clean, the cleaner. Yeah, like, you know. I mean, look at, look at me. Oh, yeah, you I'm, are. I'm like, this is white light, so it's taking out the blonde, but I'm actually yellow blonde now. Yeah. And, and I'm like, and, and again, this is my five-year-old hair color. And, and then, then the other one, okay, I'll give you another one. If you, were, if you were to go like this and stand up like this, it pushes right here. So it reduces lung function, which creates a, a more adrenaline or excitement. That's why women, when they wear heels, it creates a little of excitement and guys can feel the excitement. That's part of the, the whole attraction to heels. But that is why this, the heels being worn is why women have one of the primary reasons why they have adrenal fatigue. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then on top of that, you know, you add that to a, to a chronically dehydrated society. I saw the, 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 in nutrition schools right now and in, um, and in medical, they're teaching 60 to 65% water in the body because that is actually what the population is right now, which, but we were designed to be 70%. Yeah. So, so we have, we have all these things and women, um, and other ones like, uh, like tampons, the tampons oh. aren't just tampons oh anymore. They're, yeah. they're basically cigarettes and bleach mm -hmm. put right in your epithelial tissue. I tell women all the time, you're better off to eat that tampon. It's safer for you than to insert it. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I, these are, and these are, this is just getting started. The, well, that goes uh, along with all those bacterial infections and the IC and all this stuff that they diagnose them with. And it, it's completely emotional. You know, they burnt out my uterus back in the day because yeah. of bacterial infection. Your uterus just, you know, 
it's, I always tell people, if you think they're like, oh, we can't live like you. And I'm like, what actually it's going back to the basics. That's it. It's the way it was. It's It's the way we're not not new age. This is old age. This is like, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like, why do we have to label food organic when it was always organic? The new kid on the block is chemical. Yeah. Social yeah. Program. But sadly, if you get it in the grocery store under the fabulous lights, yeah, it's not much. I mean, we're in the process of literally getting 20 acres of land to grow our own food sustainability. You know, you can repair the soil. Yeah. yeah. You, you, yeah. you know, that's another that's another conversation, but it's all frequencies. Yeah. You know, um, uh, Jordan, my son, uh, he's got West Coast fungi, um, West Coast dot fungi on Instagram. What he's doing is he started off with medicinal mushrooms and he started right from growing one in his room bag to now a hundred pounds a month. Oh, wow. And then what, you know, what was, what was interesting for me is I, I would eat organic, but not any more garden, you know, like, like I get it as quick as I can from the farmer's market, but he started growing, you know, the microgreens and stuff like that. And we like, we cut them down and, I, I like, for example, dill. I put, had a salad. I was about to put a bunch of, you know, oils and dressing in. I just put dill in there with, you know, with, with all of the vegetables and the tomatoes and all that fresh dill. And I'm like, with some salt, Celtic salt. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't even need a salad dressing. Yeah, because it like, actually had flavor. Abs- I mean, it, it, was, it was insane. And, and, yeah. and, and I eat from farmer's markets predominantly. And this was like, a hundred times better because it was eaten like within minutes of being I've taken down. Well, and, we, and, and it's the way that it's cut as well. You know, yes. I do eat meats, um, and, but you know, a lot of people will say, oh, the poison in the plants, but it's, it's the way that we just, it's the same thing with meat. Yep. The way that we treat the animals, the way that we treat the plants, that's what causes the toxins. They, I mean, they, they, they outside of happy, glyphosate. Happy cows and happy sheep. And I'm like, yeah, they're like grown all happy and it's like they got a life of luxury and then one day it's like come in here, we're playing some music and it's like hi yeah. Yeah. Like no time. I know, all, all joking aside though, but it makes a difference because you know, in, in humans we have uh, I'm not I'm not gonna say it. We have fear in the blood causing a uh, very specific chemical release. Well that same thing happens in animals. Yeah. And 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 treating animals properly. Correct. makes a big difference in the consumption yep. because we are what we yeah. eat. There's no doubt about yeah. it. When you put them by these towers and these things and you herd them and you and you house them in little, they, they, they say that the chickens, that even that meat, I, I'm not a big, I like beef. I'm not a big chicken person. The, the meat is full of chaos. Yes. Like, and yeah. people that tend to like a lot of chicken tend to be in a very chaotic state. And so they are attracted to that. And you meat. know all the arsenic even in the organic oh god i know yeah it's like yeah people, i know people, yeah, you test their hair follicles and they have barium strontium aluminum at alarming alarming levels and they go what is not in my blood yeah. and i'm like no it's in your tissue which is worse and then you have arsenic and uh, that's coming up even into the blood right well, now because of the and they the, put so much rice and everything and brown rice syrup and all that i mean that's why these kiddos you know i do a lot with spectrum kiddos and the arsenic is through the roof yeah and um, yeah. it's um, you know you oh Oh, um, message me, uh, remind me, but um, I want to put you in the parents group. It's going to go live where the parents are helping the children. We have, we have, we have a, a test group of about 150 parents that have kids on the spectrum with cerebral palsy, with uh, you know, autistic, nonverbal, non-functioning. And these kids are all, all of them are getting better. And what's happening is um, we're taking that program and we're putting it, it's going to be about six weeks. It'll be uh, open. It'll be open for everybody because we're getting down because it, it's a big program and we're getting all kinds of people to help out, answer questions and stuff like that. But I want you to come in that group and see what's happening. It's yeah, so for sure. Unfortunately with these kiddos, diet is a huge thing, but you know, we get a lot of um, tra- traumatic births. Yeah. Um, and once you open up that cerebral fluid flow, I mean, literally we had a four year old that went from, Nonverbal at all. We did some up. We did do upper cervical yeah. with him to open up that cerebral fluid. A little bit of fashion. The kid was speaking. Yeah. The third time coming in, like saying no. I mean, I like cried. Yeah. This was before yeah, no, we no, even no. pulled him off of the Donalds. He was on the McDonalds. God, what? But either way, like just opening up their cerebral fluid flow. So, that's, so this is this is how the program started. Um, 
you know, we don't see patients or clients, but a girl reached out so authentically, it had a 12 year old girl who was nonverbal, non motion. And they were working uh, all organic, all holistic, cranial sacral, all that stuff. And, and she reached out. And um, so I met the parents and I was, I'm like, okay, I wanna make sure, if I, if I put any time in this, I wanna make sure that you guys are doing this. Because if you're not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this. So this, this right. little uh, uh, girl, Luca, 12 years, never said a word to the parents. And then uh, after about six months, she, she could start to, she was locked up like this. She could start to move. And then she went and she says, I love you. Aww. Yeah, it's at 13 years old. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So cool. I like, it's just, it's, it's, it's definitely been a journey, but it's also been such a blessing in that um, I truly believe that we're, the, the badasses are the only ones given these uh, yeah. journeys. Yeah, um, you, this, this little girl is meant to help people. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. I see so that. we just continuously ask for breath and capacity, and um, I always say just clear the noise so I can understand and see next steps, you know? Okay, so um, to wrap up a little bit here, women who are starting their journey, a lot of women out there have, have either Epstein-Barr active, Bartonella, they've got swelling of lymph system, they've got lymphedema, They've got uh, autoimmune diseases. Where, where, what's the best place for someone to start, in your opinion? How do you do that? Right there. Um, you, it's what I do with, well, all of my clients. Um, they have to be in a safe space. They have to be, uh, they have to have their spouse. So this can be, if the husband's coming on, the spouse. You have to have each other. If you don't have they, each other, it's not nope, going to work, right? Nope. And if the husband's not a game player or the wife's not a game player, it's not going to work because the autonomic system will stay shut down when it's in fight or flight and it's not in a safe space. Yeah. But the autoimmunities, the Bartonella, the Lyme, the, I mean, you name it, all of uh, plantar fasciitis, fibromyalgia, it's all emotion. Yeah. And it's I, all trauma. Yeah. And the other thing that I tell them is, even if you have a safe spouse and you're in a safe marriage, um, guess what? If you are in a toxic family dynamic, doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I did that. And, and the connection you had the other night or the other day with the, the spiritual healer that you had met 10 years before that. And we, and she did a um, connection to mother oh, and father. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you don't have to reconnect to the person in a literal sense if they are um, wounded and still projecting. Right. But you do have to come to terms with the compassion for that. And I loved the way she said, thank you for what you did give me. And now I'm going to learn the rest. Now I'm going to carry from now, you know, from now forward instead of what you didn't give me. I'm but good. that's the biggest thing I tell women in general. You have to have a safe space to heal. So got a safe space. The next thing is to do what? Um, and my, what I do along with the fascia is we walk, uh, we, we do weekly accountability. Yeah. So we start just kind of tapping into, we've all been on autopilot for so long. Yeah. My job is to try to get you back in the driver's seat so you do it yourself. I don't heal you, I just help you to see what you have. Right. So we do, do simple things like what is going on in the week? What, can, what are you in control of? Because everybody wants to say what they're not in control of. Right. What are you in control of? What can you take off your plate? What can you make space? And as we do that, what happens is you start to realize then down through family of origin and connections and relationships. That's how I do it. Um, because a lot of these quote therapists that walk you back into this family of origin in this dark space and you have no clue, you're not ready, you're not prepared. It's very sad that they do it. Uh, it was happened to me. If we start in today, what's today, what's in this week, and having them write each week, what even happened in your week? Half the time people don't even know what happened in their week. And so then I, I, got, I got kids. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I don't have even a moment for myself. What do you say to them? You do. You make it a part. Like you do. Um, so when, when we started our journey, and I implemented this with my clients as well, we started doing daily check-ins, we call them. Yeah. It doesn't matter if if we were coming back from soccer practice, it doesn't matter if my husband was out of town, we checked in each night. Mm -hmm. And we started with some ownership 
and we started with the gifts we have today and meaning we thank each other within the family because if if you don't have time for yourself do not think you're raising a child that's going to have time for themselves so start with you start with um connection and being a mentor start showing them how to be you know in a marriage in a relationship but you always have time and if you don't quit your job because <laughs> yeah. it's not worth it i quit yeah, my big wig job your job of your life at some point and people that's another one it's like I can't leave my job. And I'm like, everybody I know who has done that finds a way. I did it. Guess what? I don't have a big retirement. I don't have a big 401k. Um, sometimes I don't even have savings. But my husband and I, after all these years of healing and connecting and healing our family, we always have abundance. We always have money. Um, you don't need this nest and, you know, this system. The, the, um, the, nest, the nest is actually the trick because the the nest creates a false sense of security because you start to protect the nest. And what I protect means I get attacked. Well, and the people providing the nest, guess what? Yeah. They become billionaires by giving you money. Yeah. So anytime I tell people who, who, are, who are, I have to have this job for five more years, I have to do this for five more years. I'm like, that's cool. But you know, what's your quality of this retirement in five years if you can't even function right now? Yeah. And um, I always just say, you can make a way. My husband and I both left jobs that were very exhausting. Um, we moved to Florida because we didn't think we'd probably retire. Um, what is retirement anyways? I mean, that's really, I do what I, I do what I love to do. Working for somebody yeah. else. That's and I'm, I hope I don't ever stop doing this, you know? You won't, um, you won't, but you'll do it at a higher level. I mean, your, your experiences now are going to, um, and the way that you operate is you love to share and teach. You're going to move from working with people to helping people working with people and then yeah, mentoring, the mentoring people that are working with people, helping yeah. people. That's yeah. where your journey is. I mean, your, your, your gift is to have, have a deep connection and understanding to the problem and help people feel that problem. Yeah. And yours. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's where it's at. Thank you, Ryan. We, hey, do yeah. you, uh, do you take, do you take clients still? Um, I am periodically. Um, I don't have, I mean, I don't really do social media or any of that anymore. Um, people get a hold of you. They can tech, they can send me, um, on my Instagram, they can send me a message if they want. Okay. So I got, um, got to ask 777-808-10. It's my, um, it's the birth year of my, me, my husband and my children. Oh, okay. Got it. Seven, 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 eight, oh, eight, ten is your handle. So they can reach out, send you a message. And yep. if it, if it aligns, it yep. aligns. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. <clears throat> That's one of the best conversations I've had about health and women's health. And the reason why is because she's living it, not talking about it. Super powerful. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> okay, Brittany. Okay, Brittany. <clears throat> we got Brittany, it's her birthday. It's her birthday. It's her birthday. <laughs> Hi, Gary. Hey, Brittany. Hey. How so are you're, you? So you're, are you 30? Today. Wow, your Saturn return is here. How do you feel? Uh, I am so, so excited to be out of my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's birthday. <laughs> Can you say hi? hi? We're pulling into our driveway. So, uh, so, um, uh, so what's your year in summary? Uh, my it's been a big year, year for you. Big, big it's crazy been a year. Huge year. Yes, it's uh, yeah, it's been very healing this year. I've looked back on the past decade and whew, I've cried a lot this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been. It's been very healing. That's the best word I can come up with for the for year twenty nine. That's so, amazing. And we have um, oh, it's somebody else's birthday.
birthday too. Happy birthday. Dial with oh, mirror. Happy birthday. Um to oh, tell you it's Max's birthday, I know. I also wanted to tell you about our quarterback with his yeah. knee. Tell me about the quarterback with the knee. You gotta tell everybody. You gotta give them some 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 reference here. Uh, so my husband is a high school football coach, and on week three of our varsity football game, uh, our quarterback was hit in the knee. Uh, the foot and the hip were planted, and the knee was touching the medial side. The right knee was touching the left knee. Gross. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was horrible. But the MRI came back last week, and uh, the MRI showed that he completely ruptured the ACL, completely oh, tore it? the MCL. How's it functioning uh, right now, though? Outside of the rupture, how's the knee functioning? So he, it's it's amazing. It's, he, he, it's got he can strength. use it right without yes. an ACL, without an MCL, he can still use it, right? He can. That's because fascia structure. Yes, we have been, this kid, everybody's calling him a, a DE dealer right now because <laughs> we've got the whole football team taking diatomaceous earth baths and drinking it and all of the things. Um, so the, the orthopedic last week, was, you know, our quarterback was telling him about all the fascia maneuvers that we've been doing together and the supplements of your guys's that he's taking. And he said the ortho was super doubtful of what we were doing. You know, there's no way that this is helping so much. Yeah. And, but then, and then explain doing... why he's not been running and playing and doing stuff uh -huh. with the busted ACL and MCL, right? It's right, like, right. I love those and... conversations with orthos. It's like, okay, no, that can't work. Well, then explain why it is working. Explain it. Uh huh. And uh, so when the ortho found that it had full strength and full range of motion, he was like, okay, well, I guess show me what you can do with it. And the QB, he said, so I got up and I did a pistol squat. Oh, <laughs> he said, my ortho. God, did a pistol squat right there. <laughs> that, that's got to that's gotta rock. Because, you know, in an orthopedics world, to, to their defense, they, they have seen, they've been taught, seen, and trained the body with a very narrow scope and and um and it's based on a belief that the that the bone is structured but we know that the bones aren't structured we know that fascia is a structure mm -hmm. so he uh he gave us full clearance Dan uh quarterback's gonna play tonight mm. uh we're super excited a little bit nervous <laughs> but uh the ortho told him you know if you want to do the surgery we'll just make it an if right now uh yeah i'll give you three months and you'll be back on the field uh or on the basketball court wherever and they opted they asked him how he felt about giving me three months let's rehab it uh doing massage and the fascia maneuvers and keep doing what we're doing let's do another mri in three months and see where it's at so that's what we're gonna do yeah you know what you'll find is actually naturally um quite often when the, when the tension's taken out of the knee and the quad and the calf, because what happens is fascia wraps, as we walk, it, it moves like this. Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is it gets tight around the meridians on the knee. When you open up the fascia, then the muscle actually quite often will reconnect and, and, and reestablish itself. Yeah, everybody's doubting me right now, but. Well, that, that's the funny part, doubting what? You can move without yeah. surgery. You could do yeah, a pistol it was, squat. It's like it's like when do they stop doubting the results? It's it, like no, it can't be that. It has to be something else. It has it's to be something else. It's a yes. miracle. You're one, <laughs> no. You're one in a billion. Yeah, no. No, I'm just the helping hand here. If this kid wouldn't have been doing everything that I've been asking him to, we would have I mean he would absolutely be laid up with surgery right now. But I I couldn't have asked for a better uh, a better patient, if you will. Can you, okay. I'm gonna put it like this. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because someone said, I'd love to see you here in three months to see how it's going. And I'm like, he's doing a pistol squat. One, <laughs> that's a one-legged squat. Yeah. It's already, it, it's, <laughs> On the leg it's, already it's already fit. Yeah. It's already, because, 
what we're trying to do in a surgery is restore the motion of the body. But if the body can already move, then why would you do a surgery? It's do no harm. Mm -hmm. The least amount of input for the greatest result. That's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's asking what maneuvers I'm doing. And uh, when they first started coming in, I told them about the one footed sprinter. Uh, and I, you know, it's absolutely crazy. I, I can't explain how it's happening, but we're going to do everything that they've done for him and we're going to implement it for you guys. And we're just going to run with it and see what happens. And so the barefooted sprinter and the lower reset is really all that we've been yeah. doing. That's, I mean, the, uh, the barefooted sprinter, uh, routine number two, which is now on our website because it goes into elbows. If you have a knee issue, you have an elbow issue. And yep, the only yep. way that you can tear your, it was, was it on his right side or left side? The right okay. knee. Okay, so the only way that you could tear an ACL or MCL is if it's contracted already. And, and, and since the body works on pressure distribution, no, baby. If, I'm, if I'm contracted here, tight here, I'm gonna be tight here. Guess what he does all the time? Mm -hmm. That's where the issue is. So now it's, this is why the barefoot Printer routine is so important because if I have a knee issue, I have to work out the elbow issue. Otherwise, I'm going to have a greater knee issue. Right. And this is that people that are, people like even at the top of sports, sports therapy, sports medicine, it's a point that they're not understanding yet. And the reason why is because they still see muscle function, muscle function, rather than pressure distribution. The body moves through internal pressure distribution of the fascia, and this right here is equal to this right here. This is equal to this. Mm -hmm. This is equal to this. And this is equal to this. And those pressures have to be accounted for and balanced. And then the body, the muscle moves through the pressure. And furthermore, and we had this conversation last night, muscles do not move the body. If you put electrical stimulation on a muscle, it goes bang. You let it go, it goes bang. Mm -hmm. That's not an intelligent movement, that's a reaction. And that's the only reaction that the muscle has. So everything other than this, this, everything other than that is, is the fascia, everything. And I'm not going to lie to you as a massage therapist and everything that I've been taught over the last 10 years, that has been such a hard pill for me to swallow, like since embarking on this journey with you guys. But watching uh, this quarterback and watching us go through this, like it's like all of the light bulbs are really coming on now and it's well, all yeah. like- the, the other one is, is that the brain doesn't move the body, the muscle skeletal system fast enough. <laughs> and see, it takes a second and a half for a nerve signal to go from the foot all the way up to the brain, to the humiculus and cerebellum back down the foot for motor control. So that the question is, how do you, how do you actually move when you step on glass well we say it's a ganglion reflex which is unintelligent movement that means if i stepped on glass i just go point but i move to safety when i step on glass which means that before the brain even knows that there is a danger or a threat the body's moved all of itself to safety in a specific direction and the brain doesn't even know there's a problem yet right i know so the it brain now. can't move the body <laughs> i get it now yeah and that's what I've been trying to tell, you know, QB with the injury, like he was so confused when we first started working it, I put a lot of focus on the hip and the upper body also. And he was, and his parents were so confused, you know, it's, it's, you know, like when my back is hurting, why are you working my legs kind of thing? And so I was telling him, you know, I, yes, the knee is what was affected, but think of all of the muscle attachments that are here in the knee and in that fascia chain and how it's affecting and pulling everything away from the hip. So there's going to be damage to the hip. I mean, I don't know what the MRI is going to say at that point. I didn't, but well, uh, the, everything. The MRI, MRIs 80% of the time, except for like at a tear, do not show any reason for the dysfunction. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that for me, I've, I've looked at um, 10,000 MRIs and 85% of the time you can't establish in the MRI why there's a dysfunction or a pain, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. it's, uh, but it's used. So 85% of the time it fails in description, but we use it 100% of the time to describe. It's another, it's another one, it's a money grab. Yeah, yep, that's what I told him. I said, you can bring it to me, you can get the MRI if you want to. Uh, I would encourage you not to feed into it and give into the fear factor that's gonna push you to do surgery. 
uh, because again, we were a week, we were a week post injury and that kid was going up and down a tree stand deer hunting that next weekend. Yeah. So <laughs> your ACL, MC, ACL, MCL basically torn to shit. The yep. kid is now doing a pistol squat <laughs> and a week later moving. Yep. As fascia yep. moves the body, muscles stabilize the movement of the fascia. That's it. That, and you know what? I have, I have this discussion all the time with people, of course, coming from the fitness space. And I'm like, okay, well then, use your logic to explain why this occurrence, why this guy with an ACL, MCL tear, why, why can he do a pistol squat? So you just, I don't have to prove my theory. You have to prove why this is working. And this is what I love about the way we approached it is we're not trying to prove our theory. We have all, we have hundreds of thousands of testimonials and results. Now science is being forced to look at fascial maneuvers and say, why is it working? Not, does it work? Mm -hmm. it, it works. And we have, you know, and what we did is we trained our audience to take evidence and share the evidence. That's the most important part because then it comes out of the light, this dark room of, 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 of not knowing. And, you know, like when people have these spontaneous healings of cancer, or whatever, it's just like, whoa, it's a miracle. And they're happy, but you never hear about that. No. You take it out the dark light and you can look at how many people have these spontaneous remissions then you then then people are going to go why is there so many people having spontaneous remissions of diseases and and but we just don't know and then if you have a disease and you don't have any more and you think you're going to die and you're not you're just happy like you're not going you're not necessarily going around and building a case for it but that's what we're doing is we're giving a platform to build a case yep yep it's going to be the biggest case study of my career so far <laughs> that's awesome so so let's just Thank let's just uh, let's just balance uh, for your birthday. Let's just balance your heart and your head. I'll do it with you. Okay. I would love that. Okay. Breathe in through your mouth. Two. Two. Three. Thank you, body, for holding all the all of the trauma. Thank you, body, for holding all of the trauma. Until I was ready to process it. Until I was ready to process it. I've done, done my Saturn return, and I'm ready to process it now. I've done my Saturn return, and I'm ready to process it now. Breathe in through your nose. Two. Three. So I have to tell you the last couple of weeks, I just saw it again. I keep seeing this big giant circle. It's a red circle and it's got like beams coming out of it. We were driving home from Kansas City the other night and there was a semi in front of us with a big red circle at the back of it and it just beamed red. The next day, one of my astrology pages posted like, I, it was like a moon thing and it was a big red circle with beams of red every time i close my eyes lately and it was real real prominent then a big giant circle red what did we just do <laughs> saturn just do giant circle. mind my heart <laughs> you're opening up your heart it's it's the time for you to do that you've spent the last 30 years building clear old patterns old belief systems that you were born with ones that you came in with your family and you've got your set a new journey and it's through your heart this time not through your brain yep thank you <laughs> so glad that we got to spend this time together yes. thank you for sharing thank you for starting off a new decade with me <laughs> hey Brittany Take have care. a great day Gary bye bye Yeah, the uh, for astrology sites, uh, the what we use is I use a serious joy. It's an astrology training app, and uh, I use that. You can get to it through the link in our bio. You can try it out for four bucks to see if it resonates with you. But what it does is it gives you a daily forecast live, and then it gives you seven messages throughout the day so that you can Im implement that astrology. Um, and today is step thirteen, so it's 
It's expect the unexpected today. Energy is calling for innovation of fairness, justice, balance, and equality. Therefore, one of two parties in a relationship may cry out if something's unjust. The key to winning this day is observing what your heart longs for versus what you're forced to face. The problem may not be the person or the situation. It may be that you don't belong there in the first place. With the moon and cancer, feelings may run deep today. Give yourself adequate time to process before reacting and responding. So don't react and don't respond too fast. Guys, we have a virtual class coming up, <clears throat> which I'm going to be teaching. And it is a, it's, it's a modification class. It's fascial maneuvers on steroids. It's how do you integrate it and adapt it to your body. We're going to be doing that on Saturday, October 7th, coming up, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Tickets are $20. They're on our website. Joshua Tree. If you're anywhere in the United States and you can get on a plane flight, it's pretty cheap these days, come to Joshua Tree on the 21st, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. What we have is tickets for $50. Kids under 17 are free. We are doing the largest healing event that we have done in person. We have, we've only done a couple in-person events like this at all. Um, only one back in Vancouver here recently. <clears throat> and in the in-person event, we're going we're gonna to go through the trauma release as a group, open up the fashion maneuvers, and then we're going to show you how to help each other. So if you want to become a coach or add this to your repertoire, that's a good place to start. Um, Costa Rica, if you're in our Lifestyle Artist Program or you're in our 28 Day Reset, we're going to open it up to the 28 Day Reset. If you're in there, the 28 Day Reset, and the farther you are in the reset, they get first pick. Um, November 17th to the 24th, Costa Rica Retreat. And what we're going to be doing there is taking people and helping them learn how to help others while you're helping yourself. Um, uh, we have Astro Mondays coming up on uh, every Monday live with Chris Latecki. And that's at 12 p.m. Um, sorry, 12 p.m. Uh, you have to go to our event section. I can't even remember now. Um, we have an autoimmune and weight loss conversation with Lisa and Russell Kennedy. Russell Kennedy is a scientist. And that's Monday, October 9th, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tickets on our website, and you can get it there. So you go up to the event section on our website. Remember that we have Breathwork CO Tuesdays every Tuesday with Ryan Carroll from the Gravity Collective. And starting next Wednesday, we have Raw Reality Wednesdays with Rob Earth. And that starts at uh, Pacific Time 805. We're going to go back to quoting all of our times in Pacific um, because we have too many, too many time zones. So we're going to stick in one right now, which is Pacific Time. And, um, and we'll quote everything out in Pacific from this time forward. Um, I encourage you, if you can get to Joshua Tree, if you can drive there, if you can get there, this is going to be, it's a, it's a grand master Libra day. It's a restore balance to your entire life and how you show up in the world day. And we didn't pick that day. That was just the day that it happened to be. And, and of course, we're doing a live event, which we don't do very often. So. We, I am going to be there. Cynthia is going to be there. Jason, Aisha, and our whole team is going to be there. Um, we are going to be, uh, again, going through, helping people, going through classes, trauma release, all, showing you how to help yourself and help others. If you're wanting to be a coach, if you're wanting to work with us in any capacity, that's a good place to show up. And again, you can get those tickets on our website. It's $50. And anybody under 17 is free of charge. Um, and and the whole point is, is uh, we pay for the facility. Uh, there's several thousands of dollars that we have to pay for the facility and, and the cleanups and all that stuff. So that's what, they, that's what the funds are going for. And anything left over simply goes to creating more content so that we can get more of this message out here. Super powerful, guys. I'm looking forward to this month coming up. <clears throat> Court healing. <clears throat> Yeah, the Vancouver event, uh, we had a couple hundred people that couldn't show up because of a fire, but it was powerful. We saw people for like four hours, five hours straight, I think. We, we showed up at 10 o'clock, started, I think, at 10, and I think we left at four, so at six hours. And we saw a couple hundred people one-on-one -on -one at that event. We're not going to be able to do the same level at this current event, but we are going to 
we are going to uh, show you how to help yourself and help others. That's that's our key. We will be coming to England for sure. <clears throat> Nicole Young. Let's try Nicole Young. Vancouver was amazing. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, I, I believe it's that there's a power, um, the the Man Mandela effect, and the Maharaja effect, is when, when you're, um, when you have one percent of a population meditating on a single goal, it reduces the crime by sixteen percent in the city. Imagine what happens when we have all these people here with the focus. The fashion maneuvers open up a gateway, and I'm not sure exactly how to explain it. We just know it happens. Body MFR, <clears throat> myofascial release. Body MFR. Yeah, go to, the, go to our website under events. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm on. Body MFR, <laughs> Where? what's your name? Uh, my name is Rowena. Hi, Gary. Hi, Rowena. It's good to meet you. Is it Ro Hi. Rowena? Um, and where are you, Rowena? I'm in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Yay. Yeah. And, yes. uh, and uh and you're obviously a body worker. Yes, I am. I've been in fascial um therapy for a very long time. I studied with John Barnes. I'm sure you know who he is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. How, how long have you been uh, doing this? Um god, almost 20 years now. Almost I, I, I didn't know that they let you start at 10 years old. <laughs> I wish. I just I'm going to be turning 47. Oh my god. Tomorrow, so Really? Yes. So you you're, you're at 46. So you're at this year, you're sorting what you want, and what you don't want, what you believe, what you don't believe and what you want to manifest and what you don't. And then next year, you're embodying everything. Yeah. When's wow. your birthday? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, 10 seven. Oh, tomorrow. Yes. Oh, oh, my God, you're at 14 degrees. So you're a Gemini Libra. So you're that's actually a very balanced um, architecture because you think both sides in your brain and you feel both sides in your body. It makes you very balanced at, at, at working, especially working with people. I do, I do. And when you started talking about astrology on the lives, I was like, I'm with you. Because <laughs> I've always been into astrology. And when you hit that with fascia, I was like, I'm all about it. So I'm so grateful. But um, I wanted to come on live today because I work on a lot of babies. Yeah. I wanted to get your opinion on this whole thing with tongue ties and lip ties and these yeah. revisions being done. Yeah, so yeah we have a lot of that actually. And it's, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's increasing dramatically. So, Absolutely. So, and so I, technically we are all tongue tied slightly. Yes, I am too. Yeah. Not my kids are. But, but the um, entire population is to some degree or another, but we say if it gets so bad, then it's tongue tied, but technically we're tongue tied. Our bodies are smaller than they're supposed to be because our fascia was, intruded when we were born we cut the umbilical cord we weren't supposed to do that lotus birth at three days it falls off naturally and and 20 percent of the cord blood or the blood comes back into the body in the third day which is that blood we would save for the antibodies and the healing later on in life so why wouldn't we put that in so when we when we cut it it causes a shock to the fascia which causes a fear and it tightens up the body this is why this is, and, and that tightening of the body restricts our overall growth. That's why in dental, that's why they, if they want to widen your jaw, they go up to the, there's a little hole in there and they, they put a wedge in there and they open it up to open up the upper jaw. So that's what the tongue tying is. It's really the compression down in here, but the bones aren't structured. The bones are going to where the fascia is. So what we have, I mean, parents, I have, a, I have thousands of parents that have done this. What they do is one of the releases we do is the tongue pull. Yeah. Yeah. The tongue pull. And what I find is that with a baby, if you do that gently over time and then you move their head, encounter, move their head, mm -hmm. what happens is the tongue tie is just think about your, your fascia and think about it wrinkling up. And if it wrinkles up like this and like this, then it's going to pull down to one side. So if I stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, it's going to pull up. But you're going to find that the fascia that from the tongue tie uh -huh, huh? comes right under here. 
you see me right now, it's, well, it's not so bad right now because it's almost gone away, but I had this, this you know, when I did my fascia work, I had this thing that looked like I had a piece of skin hanging down here. It's almost gone now because as I've been getting taller back to my, my supposed to be height, I've only been mm -hmm. five foot 11, five foot 10, three quarters. And I'm over six foot one now. And, and as, as I gain my height back, my fascia opens up. And as my fascia opens up, part of it is like underneath the tongue, the palate of the mouth and things like that, which is starting to open up. So there's varying degrees, as you know, like sometimes it's just a little bit, sometimes it's not. The parents, when they have done it, it often, and I did it live um, with somebody and it tore their, it tore the tie underneath and it was an adult. And then they posted results, you know, like, like a week later, just talking about how much it changed their life. So it, think about it, it's not at, it, that is connected all the way into here, which are layers of fascia, which come down, which we, we think of as meridians. So if you're having a tongue, if I pull down here and I pull down unevenly, when I lift up my chin, I'm gonna pull the one side that's causing the tongue tie. So it's opening up the fascia here around the clavicle, pulling it up through here. And that, and these layers of fascia, like if you were to touch us, you would, you would like, like lose your shit the first time you do it because okay. you can move my, you can put your hand down here. You can pull this up here and you'll feel the fascia layer moving right up my hip because our fascia is all loose. And this for all of us, not just me. So, so the idea is, is that, also, if you have a tongue tie, you're going to have restriction right around the pubic area and the bladder. So if you let the pubic area and the bladder go, then you're going to have less of a tongue tie. So what do you think about all these revisions and these surgeries being done at such a I young... think surgery, I think surgery, especially at a young age, I mean, I mean, listen, there are cases where you have to do something, okay? But there is never a good time for surgery. There are some times where sur the the damage of a surgery is, and the, and the pain and the suffering of a surgery outweighs the, the, the benefit. But if, from my point of view, every, every functional issue in my body has healed itself. Right. So I would, I would never go do surgery. Like when I had my face full up a couple, a couple months ago and everybody's like, get antibiotics, get that, get that tooth removed and all that. And I'm like, fuck that. that. I'm opening up the fascia. I'm opening up the layers. Like even when you get abscess in a tooth, I can move all the fluid out. Abscess is just a blocking of fluid. So get in the mouth, well, get in the neck, open it up. That, that on Tuesday, um, and I was dreading this, um, but I had to have my number 19 molar removed. And um, it was pretty traumatic. And thank God I knew things that I can do for myself while I was in a dentist chair to help energy wise. And so when the dentist came in after putting anesthesia in, um, I was crying. And then she was like, oh my God, what's the matter? And I'm like, it's okay, I, I need to do this. You know, because I had to say goodbye to my tooth and I thank my tooth for serving me for over 40 years. And me saying goodbye also, I was kind of sad that like, um, I didn't take better care of that tooth. So I said, I was sorry. Um, but it just got to the point where the crap got infected and it had to be removed or I would have to get a root canal and I did not want to have a root canal. So I've been doing a lot of like energy work yeah. here and into the jaw and into the, into oral, the gums and area, all like that. Um, but it just goes to show you how dentists, they're so out of whack. Hey, listen, like, listen, they have a, they have a new drug in Japan. It just came out with it's already peer reviewed it's already been studied and clinically trialed it grows teeth back it's a drug which that verifies my theory that if you can do it with a drug that drug is stimulating the body to do it drugs don't magically cure us they stimulate the body to do it so you can grow teeth back and there's there are so many examples of people growing teeth back cynthia uh had had her tooth push out a cavity so like push push out the filling literally pushed it out and then it grew back wow. Cynthia did and I you know I've got my own issues with my with my two canines my canines just literally rotted out of my face like oh my nothing I could have done to save them like nothing and and I haven't I haven't removed them 
I'm letting them, I'm letting the body do whatever it's going to do. Now, I mean, mm -hmm. it has pushed my buttons in every freaking way you can imagine. Ego, um, you know, like I'm in health. What are people going to say? It, I didn't want to smile a lot. I mean, there, it, it, it has pushed every button, but, you know, it taught me humility. And, it, and, and the canines are connected to the gallbladder, which is resentment. And my body was resenting the fact that I'd done so much shit to, to hurt it. Wow. Yeah. Just, just we're, in, we're in a new world. Give, give it time. Give it space. Know that it, look at, if your body can grow a liver, when we cut it in half, it's necrotic. We do it all the time in surgery. And we cut it in half in six months, it grows back. Then it can grow a gallbladder. I have thousand examples, literally, of people have their gallbladders grown back. Well, it can grow a freaking tooth. And now we have a drug that can make it happen, scientifically proven. If a drug can make it happen, then it can be done another way. So just just put the belief back in and know that that, that tooth was there. It was The tooth is not bone like in the rest of the body. It's an extension of the organ. Yes. And it's just... The well, it's interesting. The lung and large intestine. That's great. And it's right side yes. or left side? It's the left. Yeah, it's the grief. Left. It's grief about your emotions that you've carried that you haven't balanced. It's about grief about emotions around your mom. It's that's, that's yeah. what it is. It's grief. Yeah. yeah, it's so interesting. All my symptoms, even my left piriformis, it's all on my feminine side. Yeah. Well, I mean, I you're, you're to... also in a very masculine world because you're fixing yeah. things. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, you're, as you start to transition your practice into helping people, educating them and stuff like that, and which is a natural evolution for you, then, then your feminine side is going to open up. But you're a Libra. And you're a Gemini Libra, which means that you have an imbalance in your in your right side in action and you're not not paying attention to your emotional nurturing feminine and energetic side so and and it doesn't mean that you're not right now today that's an accumulation of of, of many many years and it's interesting my son he's five and he's a gemini that's ba -doom, ba -doom. That an act? Boom. yeah 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 uh, yeah it's and listen there's no accidents when i look at a family history through astrology, you can always see it. You can always see that because the kids are there to show us something about ourselves, right? And just from a different angle so we can learn. Because if a, if a kid is an exact reflection of us, we wouldn't see the reflection. Yes. Yes. And so I'm revamping my website and I'm going to add all of Human Garage site to kind of link to you guys because I feel like I can only do so much. People have to do their own thing. And um, help themselves yeah you know it's like here's the tools before you come see me do these do these movements for seven days then when you come see me then you're what you're doing is you're no longer fixing you're in your feminine side you're helping and teaching okay yeah so when you when you uh when you give them something to do beforehand like like prep work for a new new patient you give them a prep work and say, for the next three days or seven days, do these movements. When you come and see me, this will take and make the make our work more effective. So you spend less time with me, you get better results. And then afterwards, here, do these ones because you'll find stuff in there. And and right. that's that's a way to go. Um, if you haven't done it yet, the 28-Day Reset and the Lifestyle Artist Program is where, is where we, we spend our time because we have like 20 million people around the world doing this with like hundreds of thousands of practitioners. So the people that are in that program are the ones we give our time to. And we teach you how to, how to build a website, uh, how, to, how to engage clients, how to plan for stuff. So what we're doing is we're helping people that want to leave the current world and move into a new world transition. Every, everything from soup to nuts, how to run your business, how to market it, everything. Awesome. Awesome. I'm all for it. So thank you so much. I can't believe I got it on the live before my birthday. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all you do to help people and, and, and the consistency that you have. I know that I know that things have been changing a lot for you and it's gonna change a lot in the next ninety days. Like your your world's gonna like turn upside down in a good way because you're conscious.
Oh man, I'm still feeling it, guys. I am feeling it here. I am feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. It's, uh, I think I'm going to shut down again early today and just give my body a break. Uh, I'd like to stay the extra 20 minutes, but I really, um, really want to respect my body here because <laughs> Because I, 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 I don't know if I told you I had three, ba three, um, um, three, three naps yesterday. And that feels like I got a couple coming down here. So we're going to end it here today, guys. But uh, virtual class, uh, we're teaching advanced. I will be teaching the advanced class. Uh, you can sign up on our website. It's 20 bucks. Joshua Tree event, October 21st. Um, again, it's on our website. Costa Rica for Life to Artists. But if you're in the 28-day reset, get ready. We're going to release it out. We got some extra rooms. We're, we're increasing the capacity in the space. Um, remember that we have Astro Mondays with Chris with Techie Live. And this next Monday, we're going to be bringing people up and going through their astrology again. Um, autoimmune and weight loss conversation with, uh, with a scientist Russell Kennedy and Lisa. Monday, October 9th, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Again, free tickets. It's on our website. CO Tuesdays happening with Ryan from Gravity Collective on Tuesdays. And Wednesday is starting. We've got uh, Raw Reality with Raw of Earth. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. I had a talk with Raw the other night, and I'm like, damn it, I didn't have it on Zoom. I had it on FaceTime, and I'm like, this was one of the best talks I've ever had. So we prepare to have some really, really deep, deep talks about consciousness and fascia in the body. So everybody... Looking forward to seeing you next week. Have a great weekend. Um, if it, by the way, if you're feeling a little bit rough today, a lot of headaches, uh, behind the eye, pressure, pressure in forehead, a lot of it's rampant right now. If you feel that way, tomorrow is most likely going to be um, uh, a very, very heady day. Lots of thoughts about what to do and what not to do. But, but on Sunday, by the end of Sunday, I think you're going to feel like a new person. So... Looking forward to seeing all you guys next week. And please go to our, go to our, our website. Uh, check out our, all of the new releases on there. Um, uh, and if you are a film editor and you want to work with us, we are looking for it. Please uh, go to our website and you can find the film editing under, under About Us and work with us. We're looking for film editors so that we can get more content. We are creating a shit ton of content. We want to get it out to you guys. We want to give you, we're only giving you like literally 10% of what we create right now. And we just need to get it out. Thank you so much, everybody.